Secrets management services like HashiCorp Vault help us avoid secret sprawl in our code and config files. Yoko is here to show us how we can use Vault to achieve tighter security using dynamic Azure credentials, today on Azure Friday. Hey everyone, Donovan Brown here with another episode of Azure Friday. I'm here with Yoko and I'm going to be learning all about HashiCorp Vault. Yes. Okay, um, so tell me what, what is that? Yes, HashiCorp Vault is an open source secret management tool. And we have a number of users actually running HashiCorp Vault on Azure Cloud okay. and running on the VM. And so, as I know, the Azure Key Vault is there. So that some was the people, question you I was going to ask, like, why? why are we doing this? Yes, <laughs> exactly. exactly. So that's why I'm here. And HashiCorp and Microsoft have been working together to make the two technologies integrate better and make our users more um, secure their secrets in a cloud environment. Okay, so uh, just it seems like an obvious question, but why do I need them both? Right? If I have Azure Key Vault, why would I introduce HashiCorp's Vault as well? Right, perfect questions. Um, so if you are simply only purely worry about keeping your managing your secrets, like a credentials or credit card information, and you don't have to have both, and okay. you can just straight go to Azure Key Vault if okay. that's you are comfortable with. So today I'm here to kind of show how Azure Key Vault can strengthen HashiCorp Vault, and also where HashiCorp Vault can help Azure okay. users. Got it. So let's see. Uh, it. Let's let's talk about it. So HashiCorp Vault is really designed to be lightweight, easy to install. All you have to do is to go to the project website and download the binary. Okay. And put it on your wherever you want to write it, and unzip it, put it on the path, and ready to go. All right. So I can so, run it locally on my exactly. machine, or I can run it in a VM in Azure. Right. Okay. So if you want to just try it out and just download it on your laptop, okay. to play with. That, as a matter of fact, that's what I've done on my laptop. Okay. So I already have a binary downloaded and then unzipped and put it on my path. Okay. So I'm going to start Vault Server. And the Vault Server, to start it, the configuration file is as simple as this, just a few lines. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and start the Vault Server. That's it, just Vault Server and pass the configuration file. This is all you need to do. Got it. So now it's accessible on localhost at that particular port. Exactly. Port. Okay. But, um, so HashiCorp Vault being the secret management tools, obviously, it will encrypt your secrets. Yes. Therefore, it has an encryption key. Okay. The encryption key is actually protected by master key, mm -hmm. and master key is not stored anywhere. Got it. So when you first go start up the Vault server, it says sealed. That means it's started, but it doesn't know how to encrypt or decrypt your secrets. Okay. The first step you have to do is to unseal the Vault server. Okay. But this is, I just started for the first time, so the UI will tell you, let's set up initial set of master keys. And I'm going to put it five and three. What it means is that by default, we use Shamir's secret sh sharing algorithm okay. to split the master key into five shards. In this case, I put five. Okay. You can put a 10 or whatever you want. Okay. So. And then threshold is three. That means in order to generate the master key, you need at least three out of the five shards. Oh. So that means so I'm going to go ahead and do that for demonstration purpose. So it'll give you five keys. That means you have to pick maybe five people from your security organization that you trust. Each one of them have to keep those secrets in a secure manner as okay. best of their knowledge, and then continue to unseal. So when you need to unseal the Vault, vault server, then three, uh, you need three people from the security team to be ready and enter their part of keys to unseal it. So once Vault server goes into unseal mode, it stays in unsealed okay. until you intentionally seal the Vault server for whatever the reason, okay. or maybe stop and restart the server. Got it. So features sounds like it's okay. I mean, that's how we trying to protect the environment encryption key. Right. But if you only have a one cluster, that's fine. But if you have a production clusters and maybe testing clusters, or maybe you have a cluster in Seattle and another cluster in New York, and same team of people have to manage that clusters, then it could be operational overhead. Gotcha. Right? But it sounds like to there's three of us have to be involved yes. to come in. But that, I mean, that's a secure thing. I mean, mm -hmm. I, it, it, some people can look at it as overhead. Other people think that's awesome because yeah. Donovan can't go in there by himself exactly. and do something he's not supposed right. to do. 
he has to make sure that this is approved and then three people come in, put in their portions, right. and then that would unseal the vault or just unlock the vault? What is that? The, the, three the terminology we use is unseal. Okay, got yeah. it. Okay. So once unsealed, then you're ready to go. It's right. operational. Okay, got it. But, so that could be operational overhead and also you are making those five people accountable sure. for those keys. So we do have actually auto unseal features, which is basically instead of having that using that Shamir's secret sharing algorithm, you trust the cloud keys. Okay. In our case, we're going to talk about Azure Key, key Vault. Vault. Got it. Yes, perfect. So the if you're going to use Azure Key Vault, all you have to do is to provide the Azure Key Vault information into the server configuration file. Just add this block of information. That's all you have to do. Well, when I, when I started it, that mm -hmm. piece of configuration, when right. I started my vault. Okay, right. got it. And this is just my service principle, my tenant ID and sub ID, right? Yes. Okay. And where to find, yeah, exactly. Sure. So I already have this vault server is actually running on Azure Cloud okay. and VM, and I've already configured with Azure Key Vault. Got it. So did I have, so after I have my Azure Key Vault, did I, I created my Key Vault first mm -hmm. in Azure. Yes. And then did I take the, the keys that I re were generated when I unsealed it, and I just put those as secrets inside a key vault, or do they get put there automatically for me when I unseal it? So yeah, it's part of the initialization process, and vault will do that and Got generate it. it and put it. Okay, good. So well, all I did is I configured it before I ever started yep. it. Here's the key vault mm -hmm. where I want you to store yep. the master key for me, yep. and then when I fired it up, it generated yep. it and stored it inside key right. vault. So I've never seen never seen those. Right, because the uh, configuration already tell it. Got it. That you to need to tell go the vault server. Got yeah. it. And then Don't it'll use me. that for yeah, perfect. Basically. Okay. Yeah, now I'm on exactly. the same page. So now this one is already set up for that. So I'm going to purposefully restart the vault server. Okay. So that will typically, if you don't have an auto unseal, it'll stop and restart. So it goes into sealed mode all over again. Okay. But because I already have auto unseal set up, so if I do check the vault status, it says seal. It's false. It's kind of double negative, but sure. that means it's unsealed. Understood. So I'm going to... Let's look at... <laughs> sure, no problem. So at this point, I could start using the secrets inside of the HashiCorp vault inside of my applications, right? Yeah. Okay. Just look at the log and to show. So this is, it says Vault Server Configuration, it knows to use Azure Key Vault. Okay. And it's actually fetching the store unsealed key. Okay. So again, so we don't even see it. Sure. It's the direct conversation between Vault Server and Azure Key Vault. Got it. So this is much better practice compared to having five people accountable for keeping those secrets. I mean, it's fine if you don't have anything else. It's Again, secure, you don't have a single person have a sure. key to the kingdom. Right, exactly, <laughs> so, absolutely. But, um, so this is how Azure Key Vault can protect HashiCorp Vault even more secure manner, especially because Azure Key Vault is backed by FIPS 140-2, sure. level 2, HSM. It's, right. It can be better than that. Right. So this that's the part Azure can complement HashiCorp Vault. Okay. And on the Vault side, we, as you kind of, we talked about about if you have applications that needs to talk to Azure services, mm -hmm. then it has to have a credential mm -hmm. to talk to that. And if I have to provide the service principle for every application that needs to talk to Azure service, that's operational overhead. Yes. If we were talking about dozens of applications, then pretty soon you know some applications might be sharing the credentials. Right. That's not what we want. Yeah, and they also, service principles also expire, which happened to me just the other day. One of my releases just started failing, mm -hmm. and I'm panicking, and I didn't realize until I went into Azure and I could see my service principle, it expired a week ago. Right? Okay, yeah. So it's like that's a pain to deal with as well. Right. So in a, um, HashiCorp Vault, our users use HashiCorp Vault to generate the service principle dynamically. Gotcha. So it's not, it's avoiding the manual process. Right. So do so, I've already configured the, we have what we call Azure Secrets secret engine. Okay. So that secret engine is the one that will, basically, I delegate my work to Bolt. So right. Bolt will generate service principle on okay. my behalf. Gotcha. So I've already configured it with all the information so that Bolt server has enough credential to sure. generate, generate principle. Sure, generate exactly. 
So when I do this, what's doing underneath the cover is Vault Server is generating service principle. Mm -hmm. So let's say I'm using Vault CLI, but underneath the cover, it's nothing but invoking Vault API. Gotcha. So when the application requests, the applications can request credentials from HashiCorp Vault instead of asking me sure. as a human to right. generate ads. And this should avoid the situation that I was just in too, because they'll they'll recycle when necessary, so that they don't mm -hmm. ever actually expire. Yeah. And I don't have to worry about anyone even knowing the the key or the secret for that service principle because it's being auto generated for right. me. Right. Right. Okay. And so, and as so, it's good that you mentioned about the um, actual expiration. You can set it however you want it to be, it. especially when you know that applications are gonna talk to Azure service. It takes maybe thirty seconds to process that. There is no reason to have credentials sitting around for longer than it has to be. Okay. So in this case, you can make it even even down to two minutes if gotcha. you want to. After that um, time to live, Vault server will automatically revoke this credentials. Got it. So in another word, all the applications that needs to talk to Azure service can just request credential from HashiCorp Vault. Got it. So, for, so if I have a CI system that's going to deploy out into Azure, mm -hmm. instead of having a long-lived, powerful service principle, what I would do is have that CI system request one from yeah. you, say, I want this to expire in half an hour, it will be able to deploy into Azure, mm -hmm. but it would then be revoked such mm -hmm. that no one else could use that key. Yeah. And the next time I deploy it, I would then go request another key yeah. that would be a short-lived yeah. key. Okay, yeah. now I'm on the same page. And also, like, you can renew the, uh, renew the lease, what we call lease, but if it hasn't been finished within an hour, you can renew it. Okay, and what also. I'm gonna assume that there has to be a way for me to configure the RBAC for the like for example, I don't yes, want my perfect. yeah, I don't want my service principal to be able to do everything. How do I control that? Yeah, so what I did is you can actually use that role, that Azure IAM role that you got already it. defined. Okay, got so it. this reader role that I created is actually I'm using pointing to the that built-in reader role that's in Azure okay. IAM. So you don't have to define it. So gotcha. the access control can be co fully controlled by the Azure side. Got it. So I can go in, set up the gro roles that I want, and then yep. I'm telling you, when you generate the service principle, assign it to that exactly. role and that role only. Yes. Okay. okay. Perfect. Perfect. Yes, exactly. And then also Vault can provide uh, what we call break glass procedures. If you feel like something was compromised in your system, and you can actually do vault lease revoke and revoke all the credentials. Okay. If something happens in, you know, nowadays a lot of things happen in the cloud environment. Yeah, you commit yeah. them into GitHub or something like that. Right. Yeah, we've all done that. Well, right. I've done that. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, yeah, so this is the um, demo that I have prepared to awesome. show like uh, Azure Key Vault can help Vault Server to protect the master key right. and make it secure. And from Vault side, can help Azure users easily to produce the credentials. Awesome. So this has been really cool. We are learning all about HashiCorp Vault here on Azure Friday.